Hello and welcome to the Board Game Nights. This week we're looking at card drafting as a mechanic in board games. So card drafting basically features a central pool of cards or tokens that players can select from. And these cards and tokens are refreshed as the game continues, meaning that the choices constantly change throughout the game. Because this pool is central to all players, you have to make your choices in such a way that you can block your opposition while personally improving your chances at victory. So I'm going to run through a couple of card drafting board games to show a few examples of how this mechanic works. So the first up we have is Cavemen. Now Cavemen basically features a small civilization of hunters and gatherers that you need to build up to, to eventually invent fire. Now to do this, there'll be a center pool of cards that are added every turn, which have additional um, people to add to your civilization, additional locations, and um, creatures for you to hunt for food. So moving away from Cavemen for a bit, we move to Ticket to Ride. Now this is a board game we covered in our previous award-winning video special, uh, but I want to talk briefly about the card drafting aspect of it. On every turn that you play Ticket to Ride, additional trains will be released that are available to any player to grab, and they can choose this to add to their hand. And when they've got enough of a certain type of uh, train, they can then build a network using those cards. And then more are added. So there is this card drafting mechanic where you add things to build up your resources to end up building a road network. So it uses it as the fundamental premise of the game to, and then derives a lot more complex interactions from that. Alright, moving from trains to space train robberies with Firefly the game. Now this game is a really, really um, well-designed game and we want to give it a bit more of a special treatment in a later episode, but for now we'll just briefly state that in this game there are shops, and in these shops there are cards that are available to all players that everyone can see when you're choosing which shop to go to, and uh, as the game progresses more cards will be added to that shop so players can choose to draft from those available cards. So card drafting as a mechanic can be used to add a little bit more intrigue and interest into an otherwise um, much grander and bigger game, and as done very well here in Firefly the game. So in our previous introduction to deck building video, we discussed the uh, notion of a uh, game where you build up a deck as the game progresses, adding more cards from it. Now that is also a card drafting game because you are selecting from a common pool of cards to add to your deck. So uh, deck building is a subset of the card drafting mechanic. So if some of these things seem a bit familiar, that's probably why. So that wraps up our introduction to card drafting as a mechanic. Um, we're going to now cut to Christoph and Jess, who are going to give us a review of Seven Wonders. Seven Wonders is a 2011 Kennish Field Yard designed by Anton Borza. It is a card drafting game for two to seven players. Everyone is trying to build their civilization around their ancient wonder. It is played over three ages, where first you get seven cards, you choose one, and then you pass the hand along to the next player. Importantly, every player does this simultaneously, so the gameplay is rather quick and there is no need to determine a turn order. In the first and second age, you're mostly building up your resource pool. In the third age, you find out whether your previous efforts have come to fruition. Seven Wonders is an easy game to learn, however it is a hard game to master as there are multiple paths to victory. The game only takes 30 minutes in total, regardless of how many players there are. And there are only 18 turns in total, and they are played at the same time. However, this can lead to a case of analysis paralysis, where one player ends up concentrating on their hand and then just gets stuck and wasting everyone else's time. The artwork and aesthetics of Seven Wonders are simply gorgeous. They're beautiful to look at and to play with. But the scoring can be a little bit tedious and a little form of witchcraft for those who don't understand mathematics. Points are scored in Seven Wonders by a number of different ways. If you have a bigger military than your unknown neighbours, then you can attack them to score bonus points. If you have leftover coin at the end of the game, you can cash them in for bonus victory points. You can complete stages of your wonder to add additional points. You can build massive shrines and artifacts to, to uh, make your civilization grander and more bigger. You can build marketplaces, you can build guilds, or you can get science. And now there are three different types of science symbols, script, compass, and uh, cog, and you need to get certain amount numbers to get score certain points. For instance, um, you score the number of each of those symbols squared, so uh, in this case it's 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 2 squared and then you get a bonus 7 points if you manage to get one of each symbol so this means that this entire thing is 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 2 squared plus 7 points in science. Did you get that? There are three available expansions for Seven Wonders. There are Leaders, Cities and the Wonders Pack. The Leaders expansion brings in historical figures we can choose to play. Include Cleopatra, Pythagoras, Leonidas and Stevie Wonder. Now these can be used to change your approach to each age. Cities add more aggressive cards in and allow for more player interaction. 
The Wonders Pack allows you to play a couple different Wonders. It also changes your starting resources and the special abilities you may use. Notably, the base game of Seven Wonders is essentially complete, and we find that the expansions are not essential to fully enjoy this game. They really only add in a couple of extra cards and a little bit of replayability. There is, however, a new expansion in development called Babel. Now, Babel introduces a cooperative gameplay mechanic where everyone is trying to build the mythical tower of Babel. It also allows players to change some of the rules of the game. We're looking forward to this one, as it's coming out in later 2014 and will contribute a lot more than the previous expansions. Now, when it comes to choosing how many people to play this game with, Sam and I, we prefer to play with about three players, as this means all of your decisions will directly affect what's coming up next in the game. It makes it a bit slower and a lot more thoughtful. Whereas I prefer to play it with five to seven players, simply because your decisions become a quick, bit quicker when you're just choosing the best one out of your hands. It also makes the game a bit faster and includes more people. In conclusion, Seven Wonders is a lovely choice to add to your early game collection. It is easy to teach new players and it's quick to play. We hope you enjoyed our review of Seven Wonders. Please leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time here at the Board Game Nights. So moving away from cavemen over a few wonders to Ever a few wonders. I can't remember what the name of this game was. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <Ken>. <laughs> Points to score in seven wonders by a number. <laughs>